Hello there and welcome to another Classic Golf Clubs. I thought I'd try a bit of subliminal suggestion at the start of the video for a change today. Let's get on to the video. The Base Age Driver, that's what Mizuno's advert was claiming and we'll be on to that shortly. But what do I mean by one of the last great blades? By the time that this club was produced in 1983, most of the old UK brands had either gone under or were shadows of their former selves. George Nicholl closed in 1982, John Letters had been bought by Dunlop but the name was run down and then sold back to the Letters family who tried to revive it with component parts from the Far East. Dunlop itself was in the final throes as far as UK production went, the Australian blade was being produced around the world and the Pro Special was one of, the last, one of their last Dunlop great. Plasinger were producing their top of the line Seve Ballesteros clubs but that would be pretty much their last true blades before they switched to cavity backs. Ryder produced a few blades designs around this time, but then Ryder were always a cavity back brand. Petron also produced a few bladed offerings. For me though, the Mentor was the last great blade. It had the looks and could be custom ordered as well in a chrome steel head, as well as the usual stainless steel head. Anyway, time to start reviewing the clubs. Winter's approaching now, course conditions are wet, so uh, I'm a little bit more cautious about what I take out as far as woods go, and you'll be seeing quite a few more uh, metal or um, polymer graphite headed woods on the course than uh, previously. So let's see what we've got here. We've got two uh, <coughs> woods, I've actually got one, three, five and seven in these, and these are a graphite head um, graphite shaft and they are by spin that round Mizuno uh, yep it's an unusual one um, especially the face <clears throat> this is a sort of harks back to the the fancy face designs of the 1930s um, what Mizuno were thinking of when they uh, put this design together I'm not sure uh, it's a high-tech club yet it, it's got the appearance of a, an old-fashioned club so <clears throat> whether that was one of the reasons it didn't sell particularly well, I don't know. Um, we can see the name of the model there, White Fang. Uh, I think uh, Jack Nicholas used that on one of his putters that he, he, did, he was quite successful with. But this is the Mizuno White Fang um, graphite wood range. We'll take a quick break here to look at this advert from 1987. The woods are made from interwoven continuous carbon fibre and looking at the makeup of the irons it's easy to see why they were such an expensive set. Back to the actual clubs. You can see there that these are actually um, little plastic or poly uh, graphite dowels. One of them's broke there, it's been repaired with epoxy. Uh, the face is quite worn, this club's been used a lot. But when they came out, these were a very expensive range uh, and they didn't really succeed, um, possibly due to the price point, um, possibly due to the unusual styling, who knows. But <coughs> appearance-wise and physically, uh, they're very similar to a wood. We've got whipping on there, uh, the head size is very similar. We've got a, a back weight there, whether it's necessary or whether it's just for show, I don't know. Um, if we have a look at the shaft, we can see that it's a Technoflex 5780 shaft. And what the uh, stiffness is, I don't know. Uh, the grips are um, Avon Golf Pride uh, tour wraps uh, so there we go that's the the driver and we've also got here the three wood um, same appearance but now we've got brass instead of aluminium for the sole plate and the back weight so that's the the woods that I'll be playing and now the irons uh, very attractive uh, design this one um, clean simple lines uh, a proper blade if we take a look at one of the clubs, um, start with the profile. It's a nice stepped uh, profile, decent amount of weight at the bottom, uh, nice clean face, frosted uh, with lines boxing the, the grooves in. Simple black ferrule with a gold band, 
Um, let me look at the, the name on the club. Mentor Forged. It's a forged head. I'll bring, out, bring up an advert for this. Um, rather an unusual advert in that it shows uh, four other clubs as well as the mentor and the mentor appears at the bottom and unless you read the advert um, you wouldn't give it a second glance um, but it, it makes sense it's, it's saying that a forged head is better than a, a cast cast head um, so let's have a look on the bottom of the club now we've got the name Ben Sayers and this is a two iron the set is a uh, two through two uh, sand wedge have a quick look at the shaft it's a true temper dynamic regular flex and the grip on this one I've re-gripped these the, the grips that were on them were a bit of a mix and they're all pretty poor this is a, a red grip um, just a cheap uh, set I bought off eBay and it's by it's, it's a dragon TPU grip it says on the on the end cap there and that's the the two iron the other clubs all very similar uh, even the, the pitching wedge the sand iron slightly different it's got a slightly heavier sole as you'd expect um, loft wise these are quite a strong set i'll bring the lofts up um, for you to have a look at uh, the ferrule on this one i'm not sure what's happened here it looks as though it's, it's shrunk somehow and just split down there um, unfortunate but it's still in place so uh, I'll leave that on there for now so that's the irons then and we finish with the putter I've featured this one before uh, I think on the Tony Jacklin um, Dunlop Tony Jacklin irons uh, it's a flanged uh, putter blade style um, alignment aid there and on the sole we can see it says get it the right way up the EG uh, there stands for Edinburgh Golf and the model is Rapier and around the uh, hosel there it says Handmade in Scotland nice black ferrule two gold bands Edinburgh Golf shaft sticker and a semi pistol grip with the trusty pro only um, label there so there must have been a lot of pros around because I don't see a lot of these grips on putters so no, that's the putter time to take the clubs on the course then but as usual here are the lofts for the clubs the longer irons are about half a club stronger than my preferred of 24 degree 3 iron and the shorter irons are a full club stronger uh, so the pitching wedge is 48 rather than my preferred 52 the first few holes on the course I was trying to avoid rain showers so it wasn't until I got to the 10th hole that I got a bit of a break in the weather but it means we can film some more uh, holes that I don't usually show although the light was starting to fade by this time. Some of the holes I film on less frequently starting with this short par 3 from the yellows it's 146 I think it is yeah 143 eight tyres There we go, first birdie actually filmed on the channel. The next hole features quite a bit of water, although it takes a bad shot to actually go in it. Not to say that I've never done that. Tee shot with a three wood was okay, but it did hook a bit into the left hand rough. It went about 190 yards and left me um, 
too far to reach the green so I hit an eight iron which went about 142 yards and that left me 75 to go and I hit the sand iron forgetting that it was a, a quite a bit stronger than my normal uh, preferred 56 degree sand iron so it went over the green and onto the back fringe what's the chipping going to be today pretty good not too bad for me and I convert the put and make a bogey no the lack of light seems to be playing tricks with the, uh, the the camera and the ball is leaving a ghost image on to the next hole and it's the driver this time bit of a low one uh, out into the right rough but it went a reasonable distance Drive's gone 195, I've got, one, got 145 left, I'm going to hit the 6 iron. Not my best swing. out there I thought I'm halfway between clubs six and seven just ended up thinning it and here's the um, bad chippers worst nightmare bunker to go over and uh, playing out of the rough but miracles do sometimes happen Here we have a, a put for a par. Not quite. A, a tapping bogey. So to summarise the three holes played, one birdie, one double bogey and one bogey give me uh, two over par total. I didn't hit any fairways. I just got the one green in regulation and I took five puts. Not too bad a day. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope to see you next time.